We are getting into the final couple of Home Assistant releases of the year now that Home Assistant 2022.10 is here. And this month, as always, we have some exciting new features to take a look at, including even more Bluetooth updates as the total and complete domination of all of the Bluetooth things continues, an update to the way integrations are displayed, a new handy dashboard feature, and of course, we need to talk, what the heck? I'd like to first start off by mentioning that this is the month of what the heck, an event that was done almost two years ago now and is being brought back. And the long and short of this is that this month, it's even easier than before to try and contribute to Home Assistant by lowering the barriers of entry to report a bug or request a new feature. This is done with a new section on the Home Assistant forum, where you can now head over and suggest a new feature or vote for your favorite one. It's not to say that all suggestions will be added, but this makes it easier for everyone to contribute instead of having to put in a feature request in on GitHub and get into bug reports and all of that things. So if you have a killer new idea that is not currently in Home Assistant and you think that it absolutely should be, then this is the month to do it. First up, we have a slight but helpful change to the way that integrations are displayed. Previously, when you would go in to add a new integration, you would go into the integrations menu and search for the name of the integration you wanted to add if you knew the name of the integration for your device, since sometimes integrations support more than one device. Well, now when you go into the integrations menu, you can search for the brand instead of the integration. And now if there is more than one integration available for a device, it will show up in a secondary menu that you can then select. This makes it easier to find integrations, especially for beginners. And the good thing is that even if you search for the name of the integration, like before, it will still search and display the one that you are looking for, which is a nice addition. Next up, we have another big update to the continued and impressive Bluetooth train that Home Assistant is currently on. This time with the much anticipated active connections for the recently added Bluetooth proxies. So if we back up for just a second, Bluetooth proxies was added in the previous release and essentially this allows Home Assistant to communicate with Bluetooth devices even when they are out of range of the main Bluetooth adapter through the remote ESP home devices. Some Bluetooth devices needs what's called an active connection, however, to communicate with them, which this release now adds, meaning that even more devices should be available for you to work with. Things like the switch butt curtain, LED strip lights, maybe even door locks and other such devices all need an active connection. And this is a really nice step in the right direction to working with all of the Bluetooth devices. You can either use the website to easily install dedicated Bluetooth firmware onto an ESP32 device, or if you have an existing ESP home project you would like to use, then it's a simple case of adding an additional line to your Bluetooth proxy configuration to get active connections working. All in all, a very nice little addition to Home Assistant and ESP Home. Another addition related to the Bluetooth updates is a new integration for iBeacons, which will allow Home Assistant to track iBeacons that you may attach to your person or to items such as your car keys. And then Home Assistant can then approximate the distance of those iBeacons away from the nearest Bluetooth adapter. Assuming that you have a compatible iBeacon device which could open up the potential for some rather nice automations. Home Assistant dashboards also get a nice new little feature too called subviews. So if you've watched any of my dashboard videos, you will see that I have a room-based navigation that has a back button to be able to quickly navigate back and forth between rooms and the main page. This was possible by adding some more complex code to your dashboards, or if you were using a community-made dashboard for your Home Assistant like Mushroom, but now this is a native feature inside of Home Assistant so that you can now very easily add this with minimal effort. To add a sub view, simply go over and edit your dashboard and add a new view and then hit the sub view option. You will notice that when you create a sub view, it now automatically has a back button in the top left hand corner. And if you're looking at it from the main page, it does not appear in the top navigation bar, which helps to keep things tidy and organized. If you want to navigate to the sub view, you can then create a simple button card and then use the navigate action and select your sub view, allowing you to navigate back and forth between the new view. 
This is a great way to keep dashboards a little bit more organized and clean and tidy and create different pages that users can navigate between. Next up, we have a rather cool addition for people who like to do their automations manually in YAML. So if you created a manual automation in a text editor in something like Visual Studio Code or the file editor, then you wouldn't be able to view these automations in the front end automation editor along with any other UI created ones. It just wouldn't work. Well, now with 2022.10, you can now view your manually created automations in the front end to see how they would look using the new automations editor layout. You won't be able to edit them, however, and everything will be grayed out, so it will remain in a read-only mode, unless, of course, you use the other new button that also appears on this page, which will auto-magically migrate your manually configured automations to the UI, where you can then edit them as you please. A really nice addition for those of you who have legacy automation set up from years ago, who were maybe avoiding converting them over to the UI, well now you can do that with a single click. Nice. Coming on to the smaller but still noticeable updates for this month, we have a new template filter that can now be used to do quick and easy calculations on version numbers, which will be useful if you want to do more advanced things with the Home Assistant Updates feature, and this allows you to easily compare different version numbers as well as a few other things. There's also been some work done to unify the styling of all of the dialog boxes throughout the UI to make them more consistent with each other. There have also been an additional nine new integrations added this month too, including the previously mentioned iBeacon Tracker, along with a new Google Sheets integration, which should be super useful for many of you. We also see a further two integrations now available to configure in the UI instead of the old config files. As always, make sure to check out the breaking changes section before hitting that update button. A very small list this month, which we love to see, and nothing major standing out to me at all, but just make sure to have a glance at that list to see if there is anything related to your setup. Great work, everyone. And that's we're going to do it for this video. Let me know your favorite new feature down in the comments. For me, I would say I love to see the continued improvements to the Bluetooth functionality with ESP Home and the active connections is a huge step forward in just total and utter Bluetooth domination for Home Assistant, just making all of the Bluetooth devices work, which we love to see. I suspect that the subviews feature will also be a popular one too, but do let me know down in the comments. Whilst you're down there, please do me a huge favor and hit the like button and you may as well get subscribed too. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.